Hey there, friends and fellow nature journalers. I am Marley Pfeiffer, and this is the Nature Journal Show, where you tune in every week to get tips, tricks, and techniques to help you get even more out of your nature journaling experience. As you can see, I was just looking through some of my journals, and today I am going to share one of my journals with you and hopefully provide you with some ideas and some motivation that you can use in your nature journaling. One of the first things that I want to point out is there's certain organizational things that you can do that will really help you learn a lot more from your past journals. Using sticky notes and having some sort of system whereby you review your old journals and learn from them will help you a lot. Another really useful thing that I did not do in this journal is create an index. So when you are done with your journal, you can in the back or in the front write down page numbers, which you might have to add to your pages because most sketchbooks don't have them. And then you have a list of all of your page numbers and then you can put down what is on each page. That can be really useful, but at the very least, you should in the front of your sketchbook somewhere have the dates from when you began that journal to when you ended it. That way, if you have a shelf um, such as I do over here, you can uh, order them chronologically, and if you wanna look something up, you'll be able to do that. So I have yet to do that in this journal, but I will. Um, and so I'm just going to go ahead and start sharing some of these pages with you. This journal, um, you might have seen my video where I started this journal. This journal was actually broken in inside of the flooded Amazon exhibit at the California Academy of Sciences. One of my all-time favorite places for sketching. And if you saw that video, you saw me ripping this out of the plastic inside of that amazing flooded tunnel with giant arapaima fish and all kinds of other Amazonian fish swimming all around me. So I immediately jumped in and in this journal I was using these um, those pilot uh, double-sided Japanese pins and this was also the journal that I started when I did that um, technique that I talked about in my video which is the insider checklist. And so that was the first time that I kind of got outside of my comfort zone at the Academy of Sciences, got outside of my little rut, and nature journaled some things that had never really nature journaled before, such as these super awesome, I think they're Philippine or Burmese vine snakes. So they're the only truly pesivorous, meaning fish eating, uh, arboreal snake in the entire world and they're in an exhibit with archer fish which are an aquatic fish that feed on uh, insects that are outside of the water also very cool anyway so there's that and one thing that I was trying to do differently that I'm gonna analyze right now and this is what you can do when you look back at your old journals is sort of analyze what your process was and practice your self-awareness metacognition and learn from your um, failures as well as your successes. So in this journal, I broke it in in a way that I usually don't, a little bit more bold, opening it up there in that situation and just starting off with a lot of these um, gesture sketches as you can see of these fish. And I found that that way of starting off the journal um, worked well for me. Um, so there's, I have some more pages of that. You can see the archer fish. Uh, that were in the exhibit and I did attempt to do some you know diagramming that is one of my goals so when you're looking through your past journals you can think about what your goals are and what the things are you want to improve that's one of mine for 2020 is more more diagrams more more bold drawings as well and more diagrams Here is something I've talked in uh, previous videos, like when I interviewed Akshay about stealing ideas. This is something that I stole um, directly from John Muir Laws and a lot of other people do this. Akshay has been doing this a lot too. But this is where 
you draw an animal or a plant and instead of trying to color in the whole thing, you just choose one segment that you will, um, you will attempt the skin pattern or the surface pattern on there. You could do this for a rock too, because there's this problem. So there's this problem sometimes or a conflict between showing the three dimensionality of an object or an animal and showing the surface uh, details. And so a lot of times we're interested in both of those things. And unless you're gonna spend five hours on a single subject, you're unlikely to achieve both of those things, especially with certain animals, such as like zebras that have, or um, other animals with cryptic patterns where that surface detail actually makes it harder to see the volumetric shape. Anyways, drawing just a little bit of it, Jack has a really cool giraffe where he's drawn this whole giraffe um, gesture and kind of sketch of the, the anatomy and the volumetric shape of that animal. And then instead of trying to put the dots all over it, um, which would also lead to frustration and probably lead to a lack of accuracy in, in the depiction of those spots, he just takes small segments of its neck and then I think a segment on its rump and a segment on its leg to display um, the um, spots there. And while the effect is, it, it's, a tech, it's a tactic, that is um, really useful for the artist. It also creates sort of an aesthetic effect that I think is interesting. And if I had tried to do this entire anaconda, chances are I would have gotten lazy partway through and sort of not really um, put as much attention into the uh, depicting the patterns as they were actually represented. So I'm really glad that technique really helped me out and that was a direct steal. So you can steal directly from other people's techniques as well. We work in an open source community and I just read this really cool book about innovation. I'll have to talk more about it later, but it talks about how real, the best innovations in history have actually come when there's an open sourcing community for people to share ideas. We, we have developed this sort of myth around um, lone geniuses coming up with good ideas on their own, but most of history's truly innovative works have come from situations where it's possible to steal or share ideas. So that's enough about anacondas and stealing ideas. Um, the next thing that um, I wanted to share is a little bit about meta-awareness. So this is something that I'm so grateful to Jack John Muir Laws for really um, steeping the nature journaling movement from the beginning with this inf emphasis on self-awareness because it's one of the most important learning tools. So one thing that I noticed while about myself um, while I was drawing, I was practicing drawing these um, spiders, these baby tarantulas, and what I noticed was that so tarantulas legs create a lot of foreshortening challenges. So drawing my arm pointing like this straight at you would be very challenging. Even my fingers, look how challenging that would be to draw. And so a lot of times in our brain, we, we, we shift those shapes. And so what I was noticing is um, instead of like here, you can really see it. See how that leg right there angles back? Well, what I noticed was that when my, um, and I, I used my journal as a platform for expressing and questioning what I was noticing about myself. And this is helping me learn about this. But what I was noticing is that when my brain, it, it seemed like when my brain was struggling with the foreshortening, I would change the angle of the joint, uh, the leg joint, so that I wouldn't have to deal with the foreshortening. And I was actually um, fictionalizing the, the, what I was seeing. And this is something that's really common in drawing. We're looking at something and even though we're observing what that thing actually looks like, part of our brain between our observation and our drawing is changing what we see into something that we feel like we can draw. And so noticing that is super important because these things are happening unconsciously. So daylighting, daylighting that and being self-aware about that and then trying to do something 
um, about it is really important and you don't necessarily need to be judgmental so for example I I drew this one and then I noticed something was weird about how I drew that leg so then I wrote foreshortening weak equals angle altering so I had a question about my what I was doing and then I asked why does this happen I, I tried drawing a couple more um, hopefully more accurate to what I was seeing and then how can I make it look right so this process is something that you could also apply and I'm hoping to apply it more but basically noticing things that you're doing yourself and then um, using your journal your nature journal as a place to figure these things out and and improve because it would be really easy to just say oh I suck at drawing tarantulas or come up with all of these other stories without actually tackling what's going on or sort of trying to solve that mystery. So that's just a little bit about self-awareness and metacognition that I think we're already ahead of the game with this in the nature journaling community, but it's something to, to always pay attention to because it doesn't come naturally. All right. So that was really fun. I was drawing, I've been drawing lots of those tarantulas. Another thing that I wanted to talk about is, um, I've been experimenting with, and this is something I'm going to have to come back and talk about this a little bit more. Some people, um, such as Lori, have been asking me about this, but um, in this, it, I, I've in another video, I talk about how using just one journal for everything is better, and um, at least was for me. And in this case, I did some sketch noting during a work meeting. So you can see I'm, I'm trying to sketch note um, during the meeting at my work and um, I did that in my regular nature journal, sort of my omni journal. Um, now I'm actually moving more towards a practice where I am starting to separate things out a little bit more. You might have seen my bullet journal video, but so you can see that a lot of this is, is basically note taking a lot of um, text. If your sketchbook for your nature journal is nicer paper, you might feel like this is a waste. You also might feel um, slightly intimidated by taking out your whole sketchbook during a work type situation. That's totally understandable. That's something that Lori talked about. Um, so I don't have a totally strong opinion one way or the other about this. This is something that I'm, I'm, I'm considering and I'm working on. Um, okay, another thing that I was doing a lot during this um, this nature journal was working off of people's photos from Instagram. And I think I did a uh, Instagram video about this page, but these are these really cool cockatoos from Australia based off of um, photos from Tess Pointer on Instagram. And she has amazing photos of um, Australian wildlife. And I wanted to point something out here is the approach that I used is sort of like this way of um, using organically building a page that looks nice so this is this right here is the closest to the actual photo and I actually started with this so it's almost like a landscape veto and in this I just kind of captured and sort of warmed up to the basic thing then I started to do sort of a larger one but you also see that I took time to sort of deconstruct the shapes and I'm skipping around and even um, in some places just focusing on the colors and this takes pressure off of creating um, a pretty page and so what I recommend if you're having issues with um, being too focused and getting too precious about um, creating a pretty page is to try jumping around and that will trick your brain into paying attention more and thinking about the drawing, the actual process and the observation instead of worrying about how pretty it is. And what ends up happening is by taking that pressure off, you often can organically build a pretty page. Thanks to Test Pointer in Australia for those awesome photos. Um, let's see, There's, I, I had a really fun trip here with Ivea, Eleanor, Rodney, and Victoria all the way from Montana. Um, all those people came on a really fun and cold and windy trip out at Point Reyes to see the elk rut. It was so foggy, we didn't see that many elk but um, until the end, but we saw weasels close up. And this is something 
This is another thing you can do when you're reviewing one of your old journals is talk about goals. So we saw a weasel and um, weasels and mustelids in general are one of my favorite groups of animals and it was so exciting to see it. And this is the kind of event that happens very quickly and you might never record in your nature journal. I usually don't. Um, and this time I forced myself to at least try to create almost like a comic of it and a short um, description that you can see here in words. So I recommend it. I have a video about this, but when you see like little action moments, just try, give yourself permission to try recording it because you'll be grateful. You'll be really grateful later. Okay, I'm gonna share one more thing from this journal. So another thing that I'm trying to be intentional about and work on as like a practice is um, shrinking, shrinking and blowing things up. So a lot of times in our drawing, we, we um, are always unconsciously drawing things at a certain size. Um, we might always draw birds at basically the same size. And so this is one of those places that's not intentional, it's unconscious. And one of my main goals is to help all of you and help myself um, be more intentional and make more choices instead of just doing things by default. And one thing we do by default is the size at which we draw things. So I was looking at this tarantula and what I've noticed is that I've gotten better at blowing things up and making things bigger, um, but I'm not that great at practicing making things smaller. So with this single photo that I was drawing off of, I practice drawing it this size all the way up to this size. So this is all from the same photo of the tarantula and I'm practicing and I'm trying to do that a lot lately. So um, bear with me as I get better at it, but I wanna be able to be intentional and have control and make decisions about how big should I show this and can I actually do that? Because there's certain movements with our hand, for example, that are harder at the small scale than at the big scale. And so practicing being able to shrink and blow up um, an object that you're drawing is a super useful skill and it's one that I'm working on. I'm also working on trying to make more comic type things and, and sequences. So those are a couple of things that I've learned and this is just in the first um, half of the sketchbook that I shared with you. What are some things that you can learn? Look, even if you you only have one nature journal under your belt, go ahead back to your shelf, pick it up, flip through it, see what, what are some things that you can analyze about your own process, learn about yourself, make goals for 2020. What are things you could do differently? What are things you're proud of? Um, what are things that you can learn about yourself and your process and maybe some of your um, your blind spots and so I hope that helps you if you like this video please consider subscribing and if you can't wait all the way until next week for the next episode of the show check out these two videos that I picked for you here